Mm -hmm. That's drunk? A long while back, I posted a three-hour video that was nothing but relaxing music you could find in Super Nintendo games, and one game I managed to stumble upon while making that was Waterworld for Super Nintendo. I didn't even know this game existed, and it's just as well since it was never released in the US. Only our friends in Europe got this game, but man oh man, when I first heard this music, I knew what I had to put to lead off the video. And that's just the friggin' map screen! And check out the music for the menu! That is one intense menu. I feel like the fate of the world depends on if I pick a new game or enter a password. Dean Evans composed the soundtrack here, which he actually uploaded himself to his own YouTube channel, and I highly recommend listening to the whole thing. There's a link in the description, and holy crap, seriously, every song is really good. So that led me to wonder, okay, the soundtrack is clearly great, but what about the game itself? Uh, unfortunately, not so much. This is the rare Super Nintendo game that has exactly one great quality, and the rest of it can just be flat out ignored. Waterworld was developed and published by Ocean. Well, I mean, of course it was. Who else was gonna do it? Fire? Earth? Wind? Captain Planet himself? Yeah, no. If you need a crappy, thrown-together, movie-licensed game, you call Ocean, especially after their stellar work with Dennis the Menace, Lethal Weapon, and the Addams Family, Pugsley's Scavenger Hunt. The story here is that Kevin Costner was really feeling himself after the success of Dances with Wolves, JFK, and The Bodyguard, so hey, let's start doing flat-out star vehicle films, and uh, I got off track there. The story of the game has you playing as the Mariner. No, not that Mariner. The Kevin Costner character. And you're completing various vague tasks, like collecting stuff, rescuing civilians, and making stuff go boom, and fighting the bad guys who are called the Smokers, and are led by the hilariously evil Deacon, played by Dennis Hopper. The game starts and you're drifting around in a boat, and none of the face buttons do anything except Y, which shoots a fairly pathetic looking projectile. Okay, I shoot at these things, but I appear to be boxed into this particular area. What the hell do I actually do? Apparently, you just have to destroy an arbitrary number of enemies before the game finally says, okay, fine, follow the arrow over here, and it takes you to the next part of the game, which is just, ugh. It's so slow, and your character is stuck in this ridiculous horizontal pose, so you're just this big ass slow target. And again, what the hell do I do here? I guess you just go and collect as much stuff as you can down here before you run out of oxygen. That's the red bar up top. But wait a second, doesn't he have gills in the movie? Isn't that like a major plot point? Sheesh. Well, maybe this isn't the Kevin Costner character at all, since this guy looks more like Dolph Ziggler. Anyway, if you die down here, it doesn't really matter because apparently this is just a bonus stage, I guess? Because no matter what happens here, you move on to the next boring asteroids boat section, where you're rescuing people and shooting more bad guys as they try and ramp their way into this floating town here. If you squint, you can see Fonzie jumping over a shark. Again, after an arbitrary number of people are rescued and enemies are destroyed, you can go into the main area where it switches to a side-scroller. And seriously, who is this guy? Brian Bosworth? Barry Windham? Because it sure as hell isn't Kevin Costner. The number in the upper left is the same as the number of the bad guys that got into the floating city in the boat section, so you gotta wander around and get rid of them. The problem with this is that it's incredibly boring. You got the same section repeating over and over as you continue on to the right. You climb ladders if you can grab them in the first place. You pick up weapons along the way and it's just very mediocre. I mean, it's fine. It's not aggressively bad or anything. It's just boring as hell. Thank God for the music. All told, there's eight total levels split up into two sections each, held together with a password system. Ultimately, it's just the same stuff over and over, and God, ugh, look at this guy, what's wrong with him? But yeah, eventually there's this store here where you can buy special weapons for the water section, so at least there's that. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the infamous Waterworld Virtual Boy game, which has been widely panned as one of the worst games ever. And you got some crappy pre-rendered sprites playing a glorified version of asteroids on a black ocean with a black sky. Hey, what's wrong with that? Oh, everything? Oh, okay. 
But yeah, I guess at least the Super Nintendo Waterworld game isn't that bad, it's just really boring. A Sega Genesis port of this game was planned, in fact it was finished, but the movie bombed so badly that it ended up getting cancelled. And honestly, that's too bad, because I would have liked to have heard how the music would have sounded on Sega. So yeah, in the past I've recommended a game's manual over the game itself, with Double Dragon 5 The Shadow Falls, and with Waterworld, I'm gonna recommend the music over the game. Skip the game entirely, but go check out Dean Evans' soundtrack, it's fantastic. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.